I'm Z, here at Imagination Station. We're in Waterworks today because our Just Tinkering activity for this month is all about boats and buoyancy. Let's get started. So, let's start making by making our boat. We're gonna take a piece of aluminum foil that was included in all of the kits, and we're going to make our boat. You can make it any way you want. Different hulls or different bottoms will affect how your boat floats and what it does. They're good for different things. The most important part is to make one that floats. Hopefully, mine will. All right, I'm gonna fold up the starboard bow, the port, and the stern. All right, looks like a cozy little boat to me. Let's see if it floats. Three, two, one. All right. Shiver me timbers. So, port, starboard, bow, stern, what's all this mean? Where do we get these words from? Well, seafaring has been around almost as long as man has been able to find the ocean. And some of the words come from ancient cultures uh, that went to sea, such as the Norse. Now, the bow comes from an old Norse word that means shoulder or head, as the front of the boat is often referred to. The stern comes from steer, and that's what you do with the back of the boat, is you're able to steer the boat. Now, a little bit harder, port and starboard are a little bit more difficult. The starboard side of the boat used to be the boat was steered with an oar or a board. Okay, so the steering board was always on the right. So the word for steering board became starboard, which is the right side of the boat. Now the left side of the boat has a little bit longer history. They said this is the starboard side of the boat because we steer from it. The loading side of the boat was called larboard, larboard, loading side. But that was too confusing. So they thought, well, what's a different word that means loading side of the boat? And you load the boat on the side that's facing the port. So it became the port side. And so that's why today, the left side of the boat is the port side and the right side is the, st uh, is the starboard, even though we no longer use a steering board. So our boat floats, that's terrific, but in real life, boats usually aren't empty. They typically have cargo on them. So we are gonna put cargo on our ship. At home, you can use whatever you have. Pennies, washers, weights, paper clips, anything you have on hand. I happen to have some doubloons, so we're gonna use those. I'm gonna start by stacking all of mine in the middle. That makes sense to me, so let's try it. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, oh. My boat sunk. So, why do you think that happened? So when it comes to real boats, it's very important that they're stable on the water so when, they, when they're on the sea, they stay fairly level and are able not to roll over, losing life and cargo. And the way they do this, one of the things that's important is to make sure that your cargo is balanced on the deck. Now, on a real boat, they have what's called the water line, and that's where the water meets the side of the boat. The water should come up to the top of the water line and no further and evenly. So on this boat, because it has a superstructure on the back, it sits a little low at the stern. So when we put our cargo on, we're gonna to wanna to compensate for that by starting closer to the front. So first let's see what happens if we loaded all our cargo on one side. 
So we're loading our cargo here from the docks. And look at we've only got six containers and already our boat drops its cargo into the water because it's unbalanced. So now let's see how much cargo we can get on if we load it more evenly. So let's start in the middle. So already we've loaded almost as much cargo and our boat is still level. So let's keep going. Now these could be cars from Japan or maybe uh, circuit boards from China. They could be just about anything, even finished products or food. Oh, we're getting a little low in the back, so we got to add in the front. We still got room in the front. So as we get higher, we are getting less and less stable. So we need to balance it out. As you can see, we've got three, maybe four times the cargo that we did when we lined it all up on one side. That, whoop, and there goes our boat. So, that is why you need to keep your boat level and balanced. So now, I'm gonna show you an example of an experiment to test buoyancy that you can do at home. Here, I have these three containers. They are all equal in volume. They are all 12 fluid ounces. They are all equal in shape and size. So we're going to test what happens when we put all three of them in our water. So let's start with our zero sugar Pepsi. It floats. All right, our good old diet Pepsi also floats. All right, and our regular Pepsi Thanks. Why did it? Oh, that's right. Buoyancy is affected by density, and density is mass by volume. So there must be something in the regular Pepsi that's heavier than in these zero sugar versions. So, the biggest difference between regular soda and diet soda is right here the sugar. Now, in a regular soda, there is 39 grams of sugar compared to zero sugar in diet. Now, I have 12 ounces of liquid here, and I could put 39 grams of sugar into the liquid, but you wouldn't really see how much that is because it would dissolve. So let me first show you here. We'll pile this up so that you can see what 39 grams of sugar looks like. A little bit more here. And there you have 39 grams of sugar. The extra mass that makes a regular soda sink to the bottom versus a diet soda. That's a lot of sugar. All right, let's talk Archimedes. The Archimedes principle is a principle that states that the buoyant force is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by an object. So, to showcase that, I have these two bowling balls here. They are the same size and shape, but they have different weights. This one is pretty heavy. This one is probably about 18 or so pounds. This one, as I set very carefully in here, unsurprisingly sinks to the bottom. This means that not enough, the weight of the fluid that was displaced is not enough to counteract the gravitational force. This one, on the other hand, is lighter. This one is probably about 10 pounds. So on this one, you'll see that the buoyant force is in fact enough to displace gravity. The Archimedes principle in action. Another example of the Archimedes principle is a Cartesian diver. Now, this is an enclosed system that includes our water pressure and our little diver. Now, we have a tiny little air pocket in the top of our diver. Water is not very compressible. So when I add pressure to this closed system, the water doesn't compress, but the air inside our diver does. If you look very closely down here, 
you can see that the air bubble gets smaller and bigger as the pressure inside of the system changes. The size of the air bubble affects the density of the diver, which affects the buoyant force. You can try this at home. We have a very fancy setup here, but you can do it at home with condiment packets, mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup, soy sauce, relish? Who could say? We find that soy sauce works the best for us, and it has the added benefit of having a clear back usually, so you can see the bubble compress. Try it at home and see what gets the best results for you. The reason that boats float is due to what's called the buoyant force. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by an object. So if we pop this in here, you'll see that our fluid levels are different because the water in here has been displaced by the same volume of our golf ball. It sinks in here because the weight of gravity is stronger than the buoyant force in this instance. Now, if we were to add mass to our water, we would create a different fluid. We would create salt water. By adding mass to our liquid, we increase the buoyant force. We're making the liquid denser and therefore changing the... Huh. More mass, I guess. The fluid needs to be denser in order for the golf ball to float. So we're adding more salt water until we get the density that we need. Closer. All right. All right. I'm tired of messing around. This puppy's gonna float. Hey! Our golf ball floats because we've increased the density of our fluid in order for the weight of the buoyancy, the weight of the object being displaced, to equal that of the gravitational force. So it floats. That's been our Just Tinkering video all about boats and buoyancy. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. And for more Just Tinkering, please check out imaginationstationtoledo.org.